Are we able to restrict accesses from specific IP addresses going into your AWS EC2 instances? Well, the good news is yes, we can do just that by taking advantage of security groups so that we can have a stateful firewall to ensure that only certain IP addresses that matches the condition of your place inside the stateful firewall matches, only then those IP addresses can say access critical services like Secure Shell. And a key question to ask yourself throughout this tutorial today is how would the hackers do it? What kind of attack methods would they do prior to running an attack against the system? So right in front of us, I'm on my AWS console. And as you can see right here, we have a specific server called server1 that we've given a name for it. And you can see right here, we have public IPv4 address. So this is the IP address that we can access from the internet into this specific instance. So now moving forward, what would hackers do when they discover, say, a website, a server on the internet, is that they will begin the process of identifying services so that they can run certain specific attacks against those services. So now we'll switch over to calling. So calling is our attackers machine and here you can see we're using nmap so nmap is a network mapping tool for us to identify services that are running inside an instance at the same time identifying specific versions of it so this result comes about because of several security settings network security settings that you have placed inside your AWS instance all right so in this case it can be a security group it can be a network access control list that you allow the connections or communication from say the internet over into the EC2 instance so in this case we are able to detect three services all right so we have secure shell we have port 80 as well as port 443 so http and https so we can see right here we have port 22 being opened up to the world so we are able to scan the ip address and then determine what are all those services within it so now the bigger question is secure shell is a way for us to be able to remotely control an instance right remotely control a server so what we need to do is that this is a critical service and we want to ensure that we can tighten the access and the control of it okay so say for example i only want specific ip addresses to only be able to remote control in to that instance so going back to the aws console on ec2 we can see right here we have a specific server that's running so let's go ahead and select on it and once you select on it over here you can go ahead and click on the security and under security you can see the inbound rules of the security group so we have port 22 which opens up to the internet so this is incredibly dangerous meaning that anyone in the world could try to possibly attempt access into this service so what we want to do is to go ahead and click on the security groups and we want to tighten the access for it so in this case over here you can see the following all right we can scroll all the way down and you can click under edit inbound rules so once you click edit inbound rules you have the following right so the first part you have secure shell and now we can select under the source my ip all right so in this case my ip address is 220-255-2158 slash 32 so let's go ahead and click save rules for this so that only a specific ip address is able to connect to this particular service so once you click save rules on this we'll be able to only allow this ip address to access in all right so this is how we can do it at the same time let's show you an example what if we only allow local ip addresses to be able to access in right so let's go ahead and click under edit inbound rules and in this case all right we want to change it to a local ip address okay so you can see it over here we can either enter it here, all right? Then we can have, say, specific security groups. So only other attached security groups are able to access into this instance, all right? Or you have certain prefix lists, so you can select any of them here. So what I want to do now is going back into EC2, all right? And I want to see what are the IP addresses that are running within this subnet so that only local IP addresses is able to access into the secure shell, all right? So you can select on this and you can click under networking all right then you can see over here we have the following private ip address all right 172.31.7253 and you can click under subnet and once you click under subnet over here you can select under subnet and you can see the network access control list you can see the details you can see the route table and all these other information so the most important part we're looking out for is ip v4 clusters into domain range so this is the one right 172.31.0.0 slash 20 so you can copy this and once you copy this over i can head back into ec2 and now what i can do is i can paste it over here so only ip addresses coming in from this specific subnet will be able to do a secure shell into this instance so i can go ahead and click save rules 
And once you have saved the rule, because this is already attached to EC2 instance, we'll be able to begin the protection or the limitation of the network access into this EC2 instance true security group, which is going to act as a stateful firewall for us. So moving on, if I was to go back into Kali Linux now, and if I go ahead and run the exact same scan, in 3, 2, 1, I hit Anthor on this, we're running the exact same scan right now. All right, so you can see right here, we have discovery of port 443, discovered open port 80, and you can see right at the bottom right now, okay? So let's take a look at what is the final result coming in from Network Mapper. All right, so we're scanning against all these different services, and in seats falling, we have the completion, and we're port 80 and port 443. So we're able to begin the protection of the service of secure shell by limiting it to only specific IP addresses. And the even greater part about using AWS EC2 is that you can use Systems Manager, Sessions Manager to help you manage connections into the EC2 instance. So in this case, say for example, I was to go back into the EC2 and I go under the security groups, right? Go to EC2 dashboard, look at the running instances, right? And go ahead and click under security groups. And right now the question is, can we connect to this instance without secure shell at all. All right, so if I click on that inbound rules, I can go ahead and delete the secure shell rule that we have right here. Go ahead and remove it. Click save rules. So now any form of administrative actions, we want to use AWS Systems Manager Session Manager to give us session connection into the system. By going to EC2 dashboard, select under instances, select on this specific instance that we have. And what you can do is click connect. And once you click connect, you have here session manager. Okay, so go ahead and click connect. And likewise, if you notice earlier, our security group no longer has secure shell being open to any IP addresses at all. And we have a session right here. I can enter who am I? I can enter LS and I can see all these details of this specific EC2 instance and we're able to manage it. And if I go over into systems manager, right, go back to the console, I enter systems manager, I select onto this service. So this is a way for us to manage EC2 resources instances at scale. So you can run commands into multiple EC2 instances. You can see right at the bottom left, you have session manager, you can click on it. And this is the place where you are able to access, likewise, starting a session against the specific instances that you have. And this makes it significantly easier for you to manage and secure critical services from being opened up to the world. And now what we want to do is under Session Manager, go ahead and select on the Preferences. And once you're in Preferences, what I want you to do is go ahead and select Edit. So what we want to do is now that we're shifting from Secure Shell to Systems Manager to help us manage all these EC2 instances at scale, what you want to do is you also want to be able to update and review all these different kind of instructions and commands that the administrators are sending over into all these instances. So what you want to do, go on to preferences and you can see right here, scroll down a little more and you can see this particular section called CloudWatch Logging. Go ahead and select CloudWatch Logging and Enable. All right, so in this case, we have the following. Choose a log group from the list. So go ahead and select Session Manager Log Group. All right, so you can create it inside CloudWatch. So once you're done with this, go all the way down and click Save. So once you have saved this over here, we can begin the process of logging all this commands, instructions, and sessions that are being connected into different instances. So now let us head over into EC2. So go ahead and select it. And now let's go ahead and select onto our current instances running and select connect. All right, so here you select session manager and go ahead and click connect on it. So once you connect on it over here, so this gives us a session. So what I want to do now is go ahead and enter, say for example, echo, hacker, law, hit enter on that. All right, so we have done that command and instruction is being sent over. And what you can do now is if you go back into session manager under systems manager, go ahead and select on it and go to the bottom left side. You can see right here, we have session manager, go ahead and select on it. So you can see here, we have one existing session is happening. Okay, so you can see right here and always at any point in time, you can always terminate the session. Okay, and of course we have session history. They can see all the sessions that are happening. And what you can do now, is you can hit over in CloudWatch. Okay, so here we're at CloudWatch, select under locks, under lock groups, go in and click on it. And this will show you all the lock groups that you have and we'll select session manager lock group. So this is the one we selected earlier, remember? Go in and select on it. And you can see one lock stream right here. Let's go ahead and click and open it up. And you can see right here, okay? View as text, and we can see the following information. All right, here, session data, echo, hackaloy, hackaloy right there. 
There are many different ways to restrict the accesses to different instances. There are many different ways of managing who can access what into your AWS account and into your workloads. And it requires thoughtful, precise, and thorough evaluation of your environment, your requirements, and what are the workloads you'll be deploying into those environments. So this is critical in the idea of developing your network design, your access control systems, not just on the identity access management part, but so many different services that you can take advantage of to help you be able to tighten access controls in your AWS workloads. So once again, I hope you learned something valuable in today's tutorial. And if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below and I'll try my best to answer any of your questions. And will like, share, subscribe, and turn on notifications so that you can be kept abreast of the latest AWS security tutorials. Thank you so much once again for watching.